And if I set this back to channel 3, and you can hear it's back to a piano sound again. Apart from these notes here are a bit quieter than the other notes because of their velocity values. Copying notes in Cubase is very easy. All you need to do is select the notes, like this, keep your finger on Alt on the keyboard, get the notes and drag them down. And keep an eye on the field, it says transpose minus 12 at the moment. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to um, copy this one down by an octave. So I let go, let go of Alt and play. You can use this feature to quickly make up harmony arrangements. And since we're in the key of C, I'm going to change the colors so that all the keys, all the notes in the key of C are in blue. Now all the keys, all the notes are in, in blue now, all the ones are in the key of C. I select these and use control on the arrow to go up. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to make a copy. I press Alt and move up a copy. I want to go up by nine semitones. I'm doing this so I've got an interval of sixth between C and A. And you can see that when I when I moved up a copy of the original melody line that not all of the notes are in the key of C. But this is not a problem. All I need to do is select one of the notes, which is wrong. I use my key command, control apostrophe, to select all the notes of the same pitch in all the different octaves. And then I just press control and the down arrow to move them back in place again. And here I just select the note and do control down arrow. And all the notes are back in the key of C. Let's give it a listen. Which is not too bad, I suppose. There's another way of how you can make copies, but notice first how I change the position of the cursor by just left clicking anywhere in the in the bar line at the top. Left click, left click, left click, left click, and depending on where you've got your snap settings, you can then um, move the cursor to the beads. See, I'm trying to bring it onto the to and position, but it wouldn't go there. It will just move to where the beats are. Okay, I'll put this back again. I select a few parts. Let's say I want to, I want these few notes in. I don't want this one, so press Shift, deselect that note, and now I press Control C on the keyboard to make a copy of the part. I want my copy to appear there, so I've moved the cursor position. And now I press Ctrl V to paste the node. I move the cursor again. I press Ctrl V and I've got another copy of the of the original. Now notice, compared to the arrangement window, once you've got copies here, the original part is not deselected. So if you don't want the copies and you accidentally press the delete button, you automatically delete the original as well. In order um, for this um, not to happen, I press Ctrl Z to go back to what it was before. To make sure this doesn't happen, you just have to reselect them on, on their own and then hit delete. Let's have a look at some of the tools that we haven't looked at before. For example, the, the cross. With the cross, you can change the length of nodes. Just like that. Ctrl Z to undo it. Or, if you press Alt while you're doing it, you can change the beginning points of the notes. Like that. And as you can see, it doesn't matter what your snap values are, the notes just start wherever, really. You just draw new beginning points into the notes. To choose different endings, this would be good if you, if you wanted to imitate 
a chord played on the piano and usually the higher strings, the higher notes on the piano, they usually go silent before the bass strings do. So this would be similar to holding a chord on the piano. Obviously you need, need them to be a little bit longer. But this is also great if you want to imitate a guitar chord and with a guitar you, you know that the bottom strings are usually played first and the top strings played later. So you could just press L to change the beginning, keep your finger on L and do something like this, a very very steep curve to imitate a guitar strum. This would be a downstroke, Control Z, and if you want to do an upstroke, i.e. the top strings on the guitar are played first, you press L again and just go the other way, like that. The next tool is the speaker. With the speaker you can oops, deselect them. With the speaker you can audition the notes. All you need to do is keep your finger pressed. You might not be able to see this, so I press on the notes as I go along. I'll do a quick one. Just play around with it a little bit and get a feel for it. The rule is that as soon as the um, node goes through the middle of the speaker, like this one for example, that's when you can hear the notes. So it's not the front bit, so if I click on this one here now, you wouldn't be able to hear anything. But as soon as I go a little bit higher, still not, but now you should be able to hear it. That's all there is to the speaker. Next one is the notch tool. You go down there, pick this one, and if you click on the notes, the notes move backwards by by one snap value basically, by an eighth note here in this case. And if you press control at the same time, the arrow turns round. The arrow turns round and you can move the notes the other way. This also works for um, selection of notes. If you select all of these notes, let's deselect that one, press shift. Right click, go for the notch tool. I want to go the other way now, so I hit control. It turns over and I notch the part across. Do the same with the next line here. Get the tool, control, and notch it. Let's see what it sounds like. And finally, the mute tool, which is that one, with which you can mute single notes. Like this, make sure the notes that you're trying to mute are exactly in the middle of the cross. Or if you've got um, a few notes selected, like this, the mute tool, click on one of the notes and it mutes all of them. Let's give this ending a listen. You can hear the difference between all, all three lines playing and only two lines playing here at the end. And you can just carry on muting more parts like this. And if you want to go back to what you had before, before you started muting all the notes, then you can go into the Do menu up here and select Unmute All, and all the notes are back again.